And it just goes kind of goes to show that if, if I can do it, if my working class foul mouthed ass <laughs> can do it, then you can do it. If you've got a story to tell, tell it because the world needs to hear it. And yeah. that's, that's all I did. Um, and here we are talking about it. So wow. here we go. Hello and welcome to the Unlocked Podcast. I'm your host, Ricky Locke, professional speaker, magician and confidence coach, and quite simply, Unlocked is a journal of self-improvement. I'm talking to the experts, authors and successful people from around the world, as well as sharing my mishaps and magical adventures in my own life too, to unlock the best version of ourselves. My aim is to give you some insight and inspiration so you can unlock the best version of yourself too. Now, if this sounds like your cup of tea, then hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my latest episodes released every Wednesday. Now, relax and enjoy the show. Do you love watching TED Talks? Or maybe you might be considering doing a TED Talk yourself. Well, if so, you're in the right place because in this episode, we welcome back episode 57, Mr. Chris Lovett, to the show. Now, if you don't know Chris, Chris is a TEDx speaker. He's an author, disruptive thought leader and executive coach specializing in simplicity. And he's one of the UK's only minimalist motivational speakers. So I asked Chris very kindly to come back onto the show to discuss his experience of doing his first TEDx talk. This is a fascinating episode. If you've ever wanted to consider delivering a TEDx talk or applying yourself, this is the episode for you. We go into full detail about how Chris applied for it, how it works in terms of geography and where you might want to go off and practice, how to prepare for the actual TED talk, what does the coaching look like, and even to delivering the TEDx himself and what that experience felt like but also what happens backstage as well. It's a fascinating episode, and I've divided this episode into two parts. This first part is all about the starting process of, if you're thinking about considering doing a TED Talk, Chris goes into the ideas of why he wanted to do it. So what is the big reason why of why you want to actually do a TED Talk? And then we talk about facing your fears and those nerves of sending that application process off. And then what does that coaching process look like in terms of getting your structure for your TED Talk. In the second part, we're going to then be talking about the actual experience of Chris delivering the TEDx talk and what happens next. Fascinating episode this, and if you've ever really wanted to do a TEDx or even a TED talk yourself, then this is the episode for you. Highly, highly recommend this. There are links in the show notes as well where you can go off and watch Chris's TED, um, and it's all on YouTube and on the TED website as well. There's a link in the show notes as well. But you're going to love this episode. I'm a huge fan of TED Talks. And obviously, one of my goals is to do a TEDx this year. So this is an absolutely brilliant episode. So without further ado, enjoy this episode, How to Do a TEDx with Chris Lovett. Today, I have a very special guest. It is a return guest. It is the return of Chris Lovett. Welcome to the show, Chris, again. How are you? I'm good, Ricky, mate. Thank you very much for having me on for a second time. I'm so, I feel so privileged. Time. Yeah, not many guests have come back on twice. So I think you and Steve McDermott are the only ones that have come back on. So yeah, there you go. You must say oh, something good, about you, Chris. There you go. Yeah, I'm in, in good company. I'm in good company, mate. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> well, Chris, it's, I'm glad to have you on because uh, one of the reasons that I wanted to, to get you on was because you did something very exciting this year. What was it that you did earlier on this year? I know. Let's build it up a bit more, shall we? Um, <laughs> yeah, we should really, yeah. I... I uh, one of those things that was a kind of a, a life achievement was to do a, a TEDx talk. So I did manage to uh, get myself onto a circular red bit of carpet, speak for about 15 minutes to a live audience of a, of a few hundred people, and it was streamed around the world, and then it's been put on the TED website. So uh, I still can't believe it myself, um, but I'm looking forward to kind of breaking it down as to how on earth that happened <laughs> and any kind of subsequent impact off the back of it, mate. So, yeah, thanks for yeah. having me back on again. No, that is a, it's a pleasure. And, uh, yeah, congratulations to you. It was so exciting when I saw that it, when it popped up on social media earlier this year. I was like, oh, my God, amazing. Because uh, a lot of the listeners will know it's, it's one of the things I want to do this year as well. So uh, it was back in March, I believe, wasn't it? Uh, March 2022, yeah. and it was TEDx Holt London, I believe. That's it. 
That's better. it. And I think for anyone that's listening, you can go uh, and go check it out. It's called Less Busy, More Impact. So if anybody wants to go watch this after, we'll put a link in the show notes as well so you can go watch this. But um, firstly, I guess a lot of people, a lot of speakers want to do a TED Talk. Why did you want to do a TEDx or TED Talk in the first place? Yeah, great question. Um, so a few years ago when I was kind of on this kind of road of discovering my own voice, you know, I, I kind of had something to say that would help people at scale. And as you know, the the book Discovery of Less came out in 2021, and I'd, I'd kind of been on this journey of letting go of everything, you know, all of those uh, preconceived ideas, stories, plus all the clutter. So, yeah, uh, the, the backstory begins, you know, sold everything I've ever owned, quit a career that was unfulfilling, uh, went traveling and came back and then told my story to my friends. And then my friend said, you should write a book about this. And I said, no, <laughs> well, I'm not a writer. That's not who I am, which was one of the stories that I should, I, I de- eventually decluttered. Um, then, yeah, the more people just said to me, you should write a book about this. Um, then I, so I did, uh, and at the same time, I was telling these stories to small groups of people. And then slowly but surely, I would be uh, learning myself at the same time, learning about myself, but learning about other people. So rather than listen to music all the time, which I still love to do, by the way, uh, I have listened to podcasts. Uh, and so learning became quite important. And part of that is TED. You know, you can't really jump into a podcast or go on a personal development journey without stumbling on a TED talk. And so I started to collect new ideas, new ways of thinking, some of them being about like procrastination. Um, So Tim Urban was one one of the, yeah. uh, And we'll come on to that one later. Ah, good, Uh, That plays a role in this as well. Uh, Yeah. Lots of things about sustainability and, um, storytelling leadership loads and loads of topics so i went down a little bit of a rabbit hole and i almost saw it as a a place where inspirational people and subject matter experts could go and share their ideas in 15 minutes or less and i was like you know what i wonder what that would be like Mm. and i thought nothing of it after that uh, the book came out and I thought maybe now I've got a little bit more of a platform. So is this more of a possibility? Uh, and then we'll go on to that in a minute. But yeah, so um, the background basically was I saw lots of TED Talks, was inspired by lots of people um, and moved away from the mindset of uh, I could never do something like that to what if mm. I could and how. So uh, So that's how it all began. Brilliant. Fantastic. And uh, it's a great talk as well. Uh, and I'm inspired by your stuff anyway, Chris. That's why we got you oh, on, which is uh, episode 57, by the way, a little plug there to the listeners. Go back yeah. to episode 57 <laughs> to listen to that. Um, great. So uh, I guess that, so yeah, inspired then to, to, to go do this. You've got this platform, you're, you're sharing this wonderful story, this message to people, which is, uh, and, and as we've kind of mentioned on the podcast, there's not much of uh, these messages happening in the UK uh, there's a lot of it, obviously, that happens in America with with the minimalists, and this yeah. what you're doing is is fantastic. So, what what led you then to decide? You know what? I'm, I'm going to pick this place. What TEDx Holt London? Was there a, a case of searching through different places, cities, towns that you said, you know what? Why was it TEDx Holt London that you decided to apply for? And what was that application process like? Yeah, uh, I saw a couple of people on LinkedIn who ran TEDx's. And so at first it was understanding the whole concept of TED. So there was, there was, so for people who don't know, there's TED and then there's TEDx. So the TED is almost like the super professional uh, elite tier speakers where you have to pay quite a lot of money to attend. Again, like you're saying, uh, they probably are mostly in America, but they do go around the world. I thought at that moment, uh, that's probably a bit of a stretch, um, but TEDx is more reachable. And so I, and so people volunteer to host TEDx's around uh, smaller cities and towns around the world. Uh, and I went and did a couple of searches, just Google searches and, and spit on LinkedIn to find out people who volunteered to run these events because they more independently ran events with the blessing of TED. 
basically for the, for for other voices to be uh, to be captured rather than just the the the, the top elite yeah. uh, people. So so I found a few. I emailed a couple of people. And I never got a response, and I thought maybe this is a not the not the way to kind of explore this. And TEDx Holt London was just by a coincidence, really. So, and I always look at this, look at opportunities in this way, Rick. I always think if you put yourself into a position to be open to opportunities, all of a sudden opportunities start to appear. So for me, it wasn't a case of just continually searching. It was to be open to the possibility of something will happen. And once those opportunities are there, grab them. And so it all started uh, by an individual who endorsed Discovery of Less, the book, a guy called Jamil Qureshi, right, who is inspires me. He's uh, he's one of the guys that I'm super into. He's he's uh, if you if people Google him, he's been on like Stephen Bartlett's podcast. He's he's been on all sorts. He's a world renowned psychologist. A few years ago, I saw him do a talk. I messaged him and I said. That's great, mate. Um, Want to be my friend? <laughs> um, and uh, we connected on LinkedIn. And then a few few years later, I wrote out to him. I said, "Look, mate, you you I've quoted you in in my book. Would you like to do an endorsement?" He didn't get back to me, so I chased him again and again and again. And eventually, he cut back to me. He said, "Yeah, it's a really good concept. This whole less is more minimalist approach. Here's my uh, three lines. Stick it in the book." I was yeah. like, "Wow." Yeah. That's great. So this guy who's a world-renowned speaker goes all around uh, Europe and the world, and you know he's the most booked speaker that I know of. He has endorsed yeah. my book and me. That's a wow. huge win for me, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and then I saw him do a TEDx talk at Holt London nice. in October 2021. And rather than See, these are, these are the things about opportunities, grabbing those breadcrumbs and then going and being brave and going, okay, what can I do about this now? So in the past, Chris would have seen Jamil do a talk in London at TEDx and think, oh, good for him. I wish <laughs> I would have done that. And that's it. That's where the mindset would have stopped. Good for you, mate. A little bit of jealousy, a little bit of envy. Put a little comment on LinkedIn and say, nice one, mate. Be looking forward to listening to it. And that would have stopped. But I thought about it and I was like, let's connect the dots here. This guy has endorsed me. He's endorsed the book. He's done a TED Talk. How can I now follow in his footsteps? So I reached out and I looked up TEDx, Hope, London, and they were looking for speakers. Oh, wow. <laughs> right? And so, you know, I thought, why not? Yeah, you know, if someone else has already done it, then if they want, uh, if they want a recommendation, then they can ask Jamil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So the process basically went through almost like a applying for a job. Yeah, you send in your bio and what you would like to speak about. Uh, very official, of course. It's Ted. Yeah. Within 24 hours, someone emailed me back, and I was like, wow. this is weird. Yeah. <laughs> and, and they said, we'd love to interview you. Uh, you're actually you're just in time because we're shutting our request down at the end of the week. Wow. And I was like, there you go. That's what, again, the universe aligns. You put yourself in yeah. the position to be open to opportunities, and stuff starts to happen. So by the end of the week, 48 hours, 72 hours later, I'm on a Zoom with three of the students who are organizing the TED, they tell me all about it. And they said, right, Chris, what, what makes you so different? We've got yeah. six speakers, hundreds and hundreds of applicants. Why are you? And I just said, because everyone's really busy and it can't go on anymore. Here's my story about getting rid of all my old clutter yeah. and now how we can use that uh, that use their concept of minimalism in our professional life. So actually we can be less busy yeah. and have more of an impact. And they went, Oh, we've never heard of that before. And I went real. Yeah. Uh, 24 hours later, they then emailed me back and say, would you like to 
join us on, I can't remember the date now, um, on this date, on a Sunday in March. And, and of course, I was like, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yes, of course. <laughs> I have to check my diary. I'm so busy. Hang on, hold yeah. on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah going after all that, yeah. all that effort. It's like, yeah. no, nah, I'm all good, mate. Thank you. That, that would be quite ironic, wouldn't it, Chris, from from yourself as a, a minimalist to to reply and say, I, I'm, I'm busy that day. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just wanted to check that I could do this. Yeah, no, yeah. I can. Yeah. I'm not going to bother. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, Hey, it's Ricky here, and I'm just pausing the episode really quickly to remind you that you can watch video episodes with all guests, receive bonus behind-the-scenes content and extra episodes, all for as little as just the price of a cup of coffee. You can do this in the Unlocks Patreon community, but rather than me tell you why you should join, here's one of our Patreon members and what they have to say. Why do I think being a patron of the Unlock podcast is awesome? Ricky, that's it. I've known Ricky for a very long time. We worked together back in the day at Argos. He's always been supportive, engaging, and one hell of a magician. Still don't know how he does half that stuff. This podcast is everything that Ricky is all about. And being a patron, I get to support him in this journey. And I get to learn some really useful stuff along the way. We get some exclusive content as patrons. And it's so worth missing out on a coffee each month. So come and join us. You won't regret it. So just like Ant, to get involved, head to patreon.com forward slash the Unlock podcast or click the link in the show notes and come and join the fun. Now, back to the episode. But yeah, so, I, so and I've, I've gone through a lot of periods recently where over the last couple kind of years, I've just put myself forward for stuff that scares me. Yeah. And then realized that actually it wasn't that scary after. Yeah, yeah. So this was just another one of those things where um went on to did the interview and then they asked me, so would you like to be the uh, speaker number one to open? I was like, to, to open it. Oh man. Wow, <laughs> like, yeah. Please put me in the middle somewhere. Yeah. Um, but I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll open it. No problem. And, um, and so, yeah, so that was, that was how it all came about. So following the breadcrumbs, putting on the thread, there's a bit of bravery mixed in there, but also the, that mindset of being open to the art of the possible yeah, and being brave enough to ask because, you know, don't ask, don't get. Yeah. You know, I asked and I got. I, I, yeah. An amazing word on that. You know, I, I think there's, there's a big reason why as well with the book, the whole absorbed into this whole message that you want to share to people, your story, because it is such an important thing, you know, especially in the, the corporate and business world about less, you know, but, um, mm. I think that's one of the reasons, me openly, that why I haven't decided to do anything with my own application is because I haven't got a big enough reason why yet. I'm kind of searching for something. I think when I wanted to do it this year, I thought there's that question that you mentioned about what makes you so different. And I know there's so many personal development uh, fans out there that would love to do a TED Talk, but th there's so much out there that's already been done. And that's that key question, is it what makes you different? Mm -hmm. And I think that's the the big thing, you know, because... Yeah, hundreds and hundreds of applicants, but which was a great answer that you had. I think you're absolutely right that there's none of that on this scale. Certainly, I've not seen in the UK at least. So yeah, yeah. that's great. Well, yeah. so brilliant. So um, so TEDx Holt London. Uh, is there a question for you, uh, Chris? Here as well. Is there a question that uh, I hear a lot of people about? Um, does it have to be local to where you live? Because you grew up in London, I believe. Is that right? I'm a Londoner, born and bred. So out of the, so no, basically, right, right. Out of the six speakers that were there, there were two Londoners, uh, me and a guy called Kane Kawasaki, who, cool name. Um, yeah. I know, right? So he's huge, absolutely huge on TikTok. Right. I had no idea who he was. But he is a um, black history commentator. He looks at um, diversity. He used to be a teacher. Lovely guy. I recommend checking him out. Yeah. And... There was another lady who was also who worked or was a professor at Holt University called Megan Wrights. She is a specialist in leadership and organizational activism. Fascinating woman, right? Yeah. The other three, a guy from LA, uh, Anthony, Anthony Gordon, uh, a lady from Russia, and um, another lady from Israel. So actually wow, no yeah. <laughs> so oh, it was a quite a very obviously it is an international yeah. business school so no it didn't matter the guys who were the guys and girls who were running the whole operation were from sweden switzerland germany france Brilliant. it was a real mix 
Um, and it was it was amazing. So no, you do not have to be from what, from my own awareness or, or my own knowledge. I don't believe you have to be local to the area, right? Um, to apply. Okay, that's great. Fascinating. That yeah, pretty because that's one of the key things. I think I, I sometimes think about where I grew up. And I've left that kind of now. So I don't really have much mm-hmm. impact around the city anymore. And that was one of the questions on my mind thinking, could I be a, a TEDx speaker in Peterborough? <laughs> Where well, I don't yeah. really work in Peterborough anymore, you know? So well, that's great. Cool. Okay. So that oh, opens yeah. the scope then to literally to go anywhere. Yeah. Well, potentially. Yeah. And, and almost like it might be for reflecting is like, is that one of the things holding me back from, mm. you know, looking at, well, you know, looking at a wider demographic or a bit of wider geography you know maybe uh, and again something that might have been things that would have held me back in the past is like yeah oh that's a bit too far to travel yeah um, yeah of course i yeah. saw one i saw a tedx in hull right. right yeah and i was like i've never been there i'll rule that one out straight away right yeah yeah but yeah. why yeah. I mean, yeah, there's yeah. no other reason but this is great yeah. as well because yeah. i think in you know europe international there, there, there could be some research here for countries, you know, researching countries that are overproductive or underproductive and think about that's where my message could work really well. Maybe TEDx, you know, uh, Stockholm or whatever it might be. There's there's some real scope there of th- thinking, actually, I can actually make an impact with this, with the people of that city. So, yeah, I love that. Yeah, man. Brilliant. Yeah, man. So you've, you've been a bit brave. You've followed those breadcrumbs. You've... Yeah. Uh, decided to apply for it, got a great endorsement there uh, as a bit of backup there, I guess, as well, to help support with the book as well. And then uh, applied for it, found out you've gone to go meet them. And then I guess from that point on, to, when they, the next point when you said to join them, what happened from that yeah. point then? Yeah, so it, again, it's all very structured, as you would kind of expect with TED. They don't really want uh, some random to come in and um, kind of dilute the brand, yeah. basically. Of course, it's like, a, so, I imagine like, um, you remember on pop stars and, uh, yeah. Brit's got talent. Yeah. People have yeah. been told they're really good by the family and they come in and, uh, yeah. No, you're yeah. Not there's no, sure. yeah there's, there's none of that. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the pressure's on, um, immediately. Um, but yeah, they do give you a, a bit of a structure. So almost like week one, have a draft for your talk. Yeah. They then offer feedback as well. So you can give them a written draft and they will, say this is great uh so yeah week two you start to do a lot of marketing and promotion of talk especially if it's in person if they want to um bring people in uh you do a little bit of social media for their channels you do some kind of private interviews for some of their partners but yeah consistently you are giving them versions of your talk even recording them as well. So I had to record a version of my talks, make sure it all fitted okay and was on time, etc. So yeah, so I had someone I was working with throughout that maybe maybe about two months before the lead up to the whole TED right. just to practice and you know give any any feedback. And obviously they're really good. They've got like really good templates of how to um create your talk so it flows nicely and almost be the architect of creating the content that hits the right notes basically fortunately uh, this obviously the story that i said earlier around selling everything and then bringing that concept into into a professional one the story was already there i just had to package it up in 15 minutes sure um yeah and I thought, it, again, I thought it would be harder than it was, but maybe because I'd written a book and maybe because I'd gone and rewritten and retold the story so many times, eight or nine minutes was it would gone straight away, basically laying down the foundations of, right, here here I was as an ind- independent individual having a life full of clutter and overspending and overconsuming. And actually, that's what damage did it do to me the community, the climate, etc. And actually once I got rid of it, here are all the advantages, you know, so more money, more time, more space, yeah. a different career, you know, being braver, all of these things. And I was like, right, so then how do I then create that at scale from in a professional context? And again, I just used another story. So I wove two stories together of 
going traveling, coming almost letting go, and then going back into a life that was cluttered, a professional one, and how that conflicted with the personal one that I'd created. And then the more I kept listening and researching to more people to the build up. So I was like, everyone is really busy, like everybody. And I was like, actually, this can help a lot of people who are overworked, overwhelmed, can't see the wood for the trees, can't see the light at the end of the tunnel um, and almost burn out or maybe even burn out and not even know it. Yeah. Um, Flavor and sprinkled with a bit of research and a bit of science and then a call to action. And that was the arc, the whole story kind of lovely, lovely woven in and then a little bit of, of a sprinkle of love it humor um, and nice. random references of the Hulk and Danny Dyer. That I love that. Yeah. Always, <laughs> That's quite early on in the uh, talk, isn't it? I, I know that about stepping on, is it a piece of Lego or something or stepping on something? I remember you saying CDs yeah. and that and then turning into yeah. the Hulk. Yeah. Yeah. There was a great yeah. line actually. You talked about how I can't remember it word for word now. You'll probably know it, but it's, you mentioned uh, in that line about, um, if I've got this many things that's making me green or like making me turn into the whole, yeah. there's probably something I need to do. It's just fascinating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. It's, uh, and so that's the thing I kind of used, use that story, put and almost like how I wrote the book and, um, you know, made sure it sounded like me rather than it becoming bland and not me trying to just portray a message, you know, do less, buy less, you can be more, et cetera. Yes. We all kind of know, we get that, right. But it's the story. And you know, as well as I know, the emotion that is connected with a story yeah. um, is the key bit around Ted. And they do encourage that. But lucky enough, I kind of had that. The practice, right? Yes. The practice. So the weird thing is I practiced in the woods with my dog. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Nice. Yeah. So in my head, I was like, I will practice it with uh, Jeff Way, right? Yeah, so oh, great! Yeah, shout out to Jeff. Yeah, great. Yeah, uh, so, a previous episode as well. Uh, stuck with Jeff Way. Yeah, absolutely. Check that yes. out. Yeah, sorry, Thank brilliant. <laughs> so I thought well, I'll use Jeff. It'll be a good, uh, a good soundboard, and a few others. And I never ended up doing that in the end. And what I did was I recorded sections of it on my phone. And again, rather than listen to music or podcasts, I'd listen to myself almost right. like thinking it was lyrics. Cause you know, when you listen to a song for a few times, you get the lyrics get stuck in your head. Yeah. And so over the years, you can list, not listen to a song for years. You put that first beat on the lyrics come back. Right. Yeah. 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 And so I thought I want to try and use that, try that approach. Great. Yeah. And that really worked. And um, there was a few occasions when I'm walking Daisy, the dog, in the woods uh, it's like seven o'clock in the morning and I'm going I'm talking about the Holy Incredible Hulk <laughs> and uh, a DVD collection out loud and then someone walks around the corner and I'm like don't worry about I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not talking to myself I'm practicing yeah like I'm just it. practicing my um, TED talk that's it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you didn't ask yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I'm right, tell yeah, you yeah. anyway yeah yeah <laughs> so so I thought I, I use that because um, that's one of my favorite places is to be walking in nature because it generates more creativity than being stuck yeah. indoors. Yeah. So I thought if I can have that atmosphere and background, then I can then make changes if, if needed. So it all came about really by, um, by walking out in nature, reciting it over and over again. And then, um, yeah, almost breaking it down into maybe four or five parts. So every part, once that bit ended, I knew what followed up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So yeah, so it all kind of then created this story. There was moments where, right, okay, story ends now. And I'm going to tell you a bit about the science behind it. And actually the research that I'm not just talking rubbish here. Like yeah. this is not just me. This is happening to millions of people. Yeah. And actually the research and science proves that we have biases towards addition. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, there's latest stats on overwork and how much time we waste on rubbish tasks and, and things like that. And then a final call to action. It's like, right, guys, now you know all of this. What are you going to do? And, you know, an inspirational line at the end, you know, how do you create your new normal to make it more about less? So, and that's how it all came about. Nice. Um, so, yeah. 
It's a good, a good structure, yeah, because um, there's a nice format structure there to, uh, you know, this is what we're going to talk about, this is why, uh, this is how, and then the, the final what if, that call to action, that's, that's really good. A question I'd love to ask you about this then, um, in terms of visualisation, a lot of speakers tend to visualise themselves on the stage uh, presenting, and some people even get a chance to, to see the venues before, so they can see what they would physically look like, so they can, you know, think of that on their walks. Did you get to see the venue uh, already or even try it out weeks before or even get to see what it would look like before no. the day no brilliant no no great. no i just went i just went there on the on the day great i didn't even get an opportunity to practice on the day oh um, wow brilliant because there was so much going on there's a live there's a live stream that was about 10 minutes or so behind that they were up and running got up and running at the same time yeah and you know what um i I almost forgot that I was doing a talk because I was so excited about meeting the other speakers <laughs> and connecting with people and just being, I just wanted to be in the moment. I just wanted to be there and experience the whole day. Yeah. Yeah. And I was there talking to people and people were really nervous. And I was like trying to go, what are you, what are you up to? What are you getting up to? Where have you been? What did you do last night? So yeah. like, Can you leave me alone? Yeah. I'm trying to remember my <laughs> talk. Yeah. Focus. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, there's me being this excitable child yeah. going, you're a lot smarter than me. Tell me something I don't know. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they're like, can we just talk about it after, after the tour? I just want to get this out there. <laughs> but, that, but that's a great thing though, Chris, because that's a state of flow, isn't it? You know, like when, you know, we, we describe this before as in states of flow of like, when a 40 minute keynote feels like four minutes or you do something, you think, well, yes. yeah, where's the time gone? So for you yeah. not panicking or going, oh my God, unless that's to come, I don't know. But, you know, of you yeah, not yeah, thinking will... about the talk <laughs> and just enjoying that moment, that's a great sign of this is where you need to be. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and um, yeah, I can't, almost felt confident in myself. as like, I deserve to be here with all of these other people who are way much smarter than I am. Um, yeah. And, you know, this is a different story and I'm going to tell it. And then I'm going to walk off stage and I'm going to watch everybody else do yeah. their talk and be inspired. And I broke it, I'm kind of broke it down into that. But, but yeah, there, <laughs> yes. Do we, do you want to go on to the panic now? Well, well, well yeah, I will in a second, actually. Yes. Um, but there's a question actually I wanted to ask you, uh, about the red carpet. Um, and that, that's obviously yeah. one of the big things that people look at and, you know, it's what they remember. Um, I've seen some speakers that use like certain parts of the stage to anchor a certain uh, part of their content. So they might, if they go to the right, they know that that's going to be the story about the past or whatever, you know, and they'll move on and it's going to be a story about something. Um, was that the case for you? Um, how, uh, Cause how, how do you usually present in terms of, you know, uh, for me, I'm quite animated. So I'd probably, you know, to be yeah. quite grounded would be quite difficult for me i just love flapping around a lot so how did you yeah. feel with that like is that your natural style was it did it feel right to be in like a, a small kind of place or are you allowed to use the whole stage no because they film it yeah. you have to be on that circular red bit of carpet right so yeah there were a couple of cameras from different angles and photographers and, and things like that so i couldn't move around too much um, but I'm similar to you in regards to flapping around my arms, right? And I don't know if you, you know, you might see from people that are listening and watch the video or the photos, my arms are just, you know, they're doing a lot, right? <laughs> um, I, think, I think it's because my lower body can't go anywhere. Yeah, of course. It's the energy, and isn't it, trying to do something? Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm, there's a few points where, you know, I'm I'm describing sizes of things like, uh, you know, lots of yeah. a thing. And so I will use like lots of, you know, big arms and yeah. things like that almost to, 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 for scale. But, but no, I didn't have the opportunity to use the whole stage. I just had to stay in on, in that little carpet. So I get a bit carpet. Great. Oh, interesting. Very nice. There's, there's a picture in front of this, uh, uh, in front of my laptop, which is a, a TED stage, which is what I look at. And it's, it's got the, you know, the TED letters and the red thing. So there's something yeah. so iconic about, it, isn't it? That I think that's one of the attraction points of, it just looks like a fantastic stage, but it's probably just a carpet they just roll up and pull out and just stick on each stage. But yeah, there's yeah, something yeah. so special about seeing speakers with the letters behind them. And, and, and it's a great shot, you know, those photos that you've got and even the video looks amazing. Well, oh, um, you. so yeah, so you've gone through this process then, you've applied for it, you've been brave, you've had some coaching, giving you some um, weekly tasks, that kind of thing to lead up to it. Um, yeah. You're there on the day, you're really excited to see everybody. And then you briefly mentioned that there's a slight panic station what happened? Yes. 
Just pausing the episode there, come and join part two where you can find out what happens after that panic station moment and how Chris actually got on doing his TED Talk and what that experience felt like. Thanks for listening to this episode. And as always, thank you to the patrons of this podcast. A big shout out to Anthony Howe, Jasmine Barnes, Chloe Wilmot, Sarah Kay, Sherry Brenton, Steve McDermott, Chris Lover, and Rory Barnes. You're all amazing. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and join us in part two to find out how Chris got on with the actual talk.